This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast 473. And I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron Twitter here in the Beachview uh, studio. Sorgatron Media. It's cold. It's snowy. It's, uh, it's, we're just, we're just making sure all the heaters work. It's, <laughs> we're like, where are our cozy holes that we can just hide in and watch Star Wars and Baby Yoda? Uh, with me, also keeping warm. Speaking of Star Wars, he's, he's decking his halls with a Darth Vader vest over there. I'm sorry. Nothing sweater. says warm and Christmas like Darth Vader That's wearing right. a scarf. That's right. It's, it's the dark side. Mary. It's the dark side of Pittsburgh because it's, uh, uh sundown at 4 30. Ugh. So, <laughs> I know, I know you're the night shift Ugh. guy, so you you see even less of the sun, if any. So oh, that's awful. I, I really hate when it gets dark like this. That's that's my number one grievance about winter is the absolute darkness and how it just isn't light out at yeah, all. And even yeah. when it is light out, it doesn't feel light. It's just like you're just here and yeah. you just have the lights and and it is. Can you imagine is. Alaska where they have like months? Can't imagine of darkness. Can't yeah. imagine. This is definitely an emotional tool. But anyways, we're hoping. Hopefully, we can brighten things up for you here on the Awesome Cast. Please go check out awesomecast.com where you can uh, subscribe and uh, find past episodes, and you can tune in to last week's episode where um, going into Thanksgiving we had a uh, uh, mom Sork on the show. Uh, as well, we're talking about uh, her auto catting days, and well, she's still auto catting and drafting and things like that. And we talked about a lot of stuff there. Uh, it was a really good conversation we had. Uh, so go check that out on the last episode. And of course, you can hit us up on the email awesomecast at sorgatronmedia dot com. Tweet us at awesomecast, awesomecast on the Facebook page and group. And the group has a lot of great conversation, including stories that we do tend to include the show in the show. A little light this week because, well, it's the holiday weekend. The news is Black Friday mostly, and whether it's good, it sucks, or indifferent. Uh, but <laughs> so we found a few things that we scraped up for conversation here today. And uh, you can also ask your Google Home and your Google Music podcast, uh, Amazon Echo, Siri HomePod, uh, to um, yeah, listen to the podcast. I just actually started doing the Google Home thing uh, at home for reasons we'll talk about in a moment uh and of course we're live here every tuesday uh on facebook live at 7 p.m eastern and if you're catching us later on one of uh, our other outlets or you have uh, some comments or just want to tell us uh, what we got wrong on this episode please tweet us at awesome cast with the hashtag ac473 and thank you to our audio partners our friends at the 405 media.com that are carrying us on their live stream every uh weekday at noon eastern time i do believe and of course uh post-industrial audio uh postindustrial.com that's sharing a lot of the great pittsburgh podcasts including us thank you for sharing that with the people um and also thank you to our patreon supporters uh, definitely helping to push the show our friends at patreon.com slash awesome cast at the coffee club five dollar matt weller john diggy Degore, and john carmen at the fan of the show dollar level our longest running patreon supporter michael fedor and pghmuseums.org as well yes. supporting the show love it go check out that pgh museums and we, we talked about that about a month ago on the show didn't we We did yeah and, thing, and things are going pretty pretty good over there oh hey let's touch base on that how is pgh museums going a a a, a month later it's good yeah so we, we have a few more members and we have uh we just added well we will i have to send out the form but mm-hmm. uh ketchup city creative is going to be joining our affiliation program so okay. that's great so another do they affiliate. make things with ketchup they don't know it's Damn actually it. it's a gallery it's a really cool okay. space out in at uh, out in All, sharpsburg also cool yeah i i met the owner out in Etna, so that's why it's, it's that's where this, this picture this is awesome picture of me with like these teddy bears oh and is that where that came that's where from? that came from from this coffee shop out in Etna when i was meeting uh, the owner from uh, Ketchup City Creative, but yeah, so it, it's going. We we came up with a, an awesome video from Kennywood. I don't know if you saw that about the holiday lights, which was really really cool. 
and I actually got to t talk with Nick Paradise, who runs their PR and social media there, and we took some awesome footage of people actually setting up the display. So if you're on your way to Kennywood, you can watch that video and kind of see That's where this, this picture, some of this the awesome work picture that goes of me with, like, into bears. I was airing when I was for the meeting. holiday lights to sell. Uh, and awesome we video also answer some, uh, some burning questions, one of which is how many light bulbs does it take to make that and make Kennywood a Christmas paradise. How many extension cords? How long or how mm. long the extension cords go to make that Special, all happen? Good, good high weather, uh, uh, you know, winter, you know, dealing. Yeah, you know. So that's a lot of the stuff that you can expect from us going forward. We're going to be rolling off in December, uh, mid to late December, an artist interview, and it's going to come out every other week. We're mm. going to call it the P PGH Art Talk. And so that's coming. We are also going to be coming out with more of those behind the scenes stuff. That's going to probably come out more in 2020. So yeah, lots of good stuff coming. And uh, the calendar is awesome. I, I posted a picture recently of the calendar where there were seven things you could do on a Thursday night. And I said, don't come to us and tell us you're bored. Because that, that's, that's great. How that's many times awesome. can you find a calendar, even like with, with uh, the major media markets with that many options on it? So Awesome. Yeah. Great stuff happening there. The party looked like it was great. Yeah, the party uh, was fun. Yeah, so go check out pghmuseums.org. Uh, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. Um, so I, my awesome thing is kind of internet. Uh, <laughs> I has <laughs> He's it. joined the, I has the 21st it. century. Just a recap, and I've mentioned this several times on the show, of course, but um, I, I, uh, I, I had managed to, um, I, I disconnected the internet when we moved up here to the studio uh, some two and a half years ago. Because I was like, well, I don't need a lot of internet there. We're basically going to be here all the time because we're building the business and, and it's become kind of a thing. Well, you know, and it's been like, I almost got internet a couple months ago because I went like to get some security cameras up because there's some weird stuff's happening in the neighborhood. Yeah. I mean, we've, you know, had the incidents before, you know, that I've had video of before with old, old bad neighbors that we've talked about. But, um, and uh, there was actually even an incident where somebody did something really weird on my porch a few weeks ago. Uh, so if you follow me on my personal social media, you may have seen that. Um, and I'm like, well, if I had internet when I was going to sign up for it like two months ago, we would have gotten them. <laughs> you know, yeah. we would have gotten footage of them to to proceed. Um, and it's not some mysterious thing that happened. Uh, so no, Monday Monday they got they installed. Um, um, and again, you know, everything was already run. We had it before. We went back to FiOS. They have hundred hundred up and down, hundred uh, up, hundred down, which is um, I mean, we got one fifty here, and it's like half the price because it's not a business yeah. account. So it makes the difference. It's um, crazy. But you're like, hey, no, I live here. Can I just have no? Okay. Uh, so. Uh, so it, it sucks that I got paid for that, but also I'm finding ways to slim down my uh, AT&T wireless account. So that'll kind of it will end up a, a wash in the end, I think. We, we were living on our unlimited phones and everything, but still like not being able to like just hook up an Apple TV or yeah. my Xbox. So I took home the Xbox One from the studio. I took one of the Google Homes, and we have another one in a box I'll still put somewhere in the house. Threw the Google Home in the in the in the bathroom this morning. Um, and set that up. Uh, I was playing Apple TV. Have the Wise Cam set up, and I and I the cool thing with that is now I kind of have a connected home and found new features in Google Home while I was at it. Because as I was setting up, and you know, this is a kind of you know kind of layout here, you can see all the devices and groups. And if you guys are on the video side, um, so this is the Sorgatron Mio. We got the TV Chromecast. I'll throw a Chromecast, my old Chromecast, on the TV at home. Um, we have an office speaker and then we have a couple of security cameras. So, and then when we go home and this is going to expand, of course, it was like, Hey, here's your wise cameras. And then here is, um, my Xbox now connected. I got to figure out what that does, but <laughs> it's connected to Google <laughs> home somehow. Uh, so I, which I didn't, it was kind of like, you know, you go in there and it's like, Oh, Hey, you want to sign in with your Xbox account and we'll connect that. Okay. Uh, hey, do you want to sign in with your Roku account? And it'll work with that too. So it's kind of expanding out and just stuff that I already have around. Like I know it's probably just seeing other apps on my phone is my guess and says, hey, I see you have this over here. Do you want to sign in for your account? And we can kind of roll on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So that was kind of the cool thing. And and, and with that, I was able to say, hmm, -hmm Google uh, what would I, what, what was something like, um, show my front porch on my office TV and it pulled up on my office TV, the camera of the front of my house. Yeah. 
So, which I can, which I can do vice versa at home. I can be like, you know, Hey, mm -hmm, um, you know, uh, uh, show me, show me the studio and it's going to pull up a security camera. I can see and Cause sometimes I'll pull it up on my phone to be like, Hey, is somebody there that, you know, Missy's waiting for a meeting and I'm like, well, I'll wait till the meeting's done or yeah. something. Um, and I can just kind of peek in and see what's going on. So how many Google homes do you have? We have three, two are connected. Okay. One thing that I really enjoy, so like I, I have a lot of the Alexas and, and, and things like that, and, and I have a small ecosystem. I don't have the cameras. I, I was going to, but now that I'm moving to a complex, I don't mm -hmm. think it, it makes much no, sense. No, 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 no. But uh, one thing that I really do, the, 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 the three things that I use the most is with the, the Echo Cube, I like to be able to turn my TV on and everything without mm -hmm. actually touching the remote. This is all one thing. It's a TV device, right? It is, yeah. So it connects through the HDMI, but you can turn the TV on. You can actually raise and lower the volume with the TV. You can really connect to anything with it. Uh, you can open up apps. So I use that, but I also use the the lights on and off in my bedroom, which is great, especially when you at winter time, whenever you wake up and it's pitch black and you can just have the lights turn on from the voice. Mm -hmm. it makes it easier to get out of bed. But the other thing that I really use is because I have right now. Let me think. One, two, three. I have three, four Alexas in my small house. That's the A train. The A train. So we're yeah. not waking up everybody. Uh, that's else's. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have I have four of the A trains going, and they're all connected. So when I want to play music, or if I want to listen to a, a talk show or something, a podcast, it'll play on all speakers, and I can walk throughout the mm -hmm. house and seamlessly mm -hmm. listen to everything that's going on. And to me, that's like the greatest feature. That's 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 uh what uh, what I would I would call house cleaning mode. It's a weird thing that I just yeah. want to mm -hmm. I, I I it's never always matching, but it's like I want to turn on the TV or radio in on every floor, and they might not even be a match thing, but at least something is happening yeah. while I'm cleaning and something's going on. Um, so that's kind of been my thing. But now that you can do this and just say, hey, you know, turn on the group. We would do it here because we had the one here on the desk and one over there. Yeah. And we say, hey, play so-and-so in office. And it would play it across all the devices. It fills the room a bit more. Yeah. I don't think it's completely necessary for us in this not, not in this large room, this space, yeah. in, this, in this studio space. Um, but, you know, it was kind of a nice kind of experiment with that and see how that goes. But now I can do that and say, you know, play on, on home, you know, home setup. And it's just going to fill the entire house with, you know, at least the two that we have. I'm sure I'll get some more devices in the near future. Um, I'm even, look, even looking to get some A-Train so we have that at home as well. Yeah. So, um, and they're like $22 right now. They even actually should, they are actually selling a mini version of the Echo Show for 50 bucks right now. Really? Yeah, on Amazon. Really? And I, and I don't think I want, I have a, if I get a screen, I think I want to get the Google Home. Okay. Like I want to get that, I want to get the Nest, but I also want to get a Ring doorbell. Mm -hmm. Unless there's a Google alternative that's, that people would prefer. Um, I'm so open to suggestions that there. that opens up an interesting conversation, and since we have time to, to, to Since there's that, no stories, we're going to have the longest awesome thing in the weeks ever. Yes. <laughs> uh, I was listening to uh, NPR, and they brought up an interesting point, and it's something that I've actually observed prior to this episode coming out, and it has to do with the ring cameras and the negative effects of it. Yes. So I think with the wise cameras, obviously you're, you're not going to have those same negative effects, but with the ring cameras, they have that community that is called uh, Neighbors, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And basically, you can go on and rat on people on social media, <laughs> and then yes. everybody gets up in an uproar, mm -hmm. thinking that there's oh, just, just oh, villains just, just on like, every corner. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's adding a, a tool to your next door or your community Facebook groups, which I think both of us have had experiences um, in the negative in those, in those uh, uh, groups and positive too, this, you know, to be fair, but unfortunately they do just turn into giant um, rant fests, I guess. Um, so yeah, no. So that just adds like ammunition to it. Well, this one lady had a situation where she had somebody doing something odd on her porch. Mm -hmm. And I guess the way they position these cameras it, with the rings in particular is it, it looks up at a person to make them look intimidating. So that way yes. you're more likely to share it and be up in arms and, and worried. I, just the nature of it. It's so, a doorbell. It's where the doorbell is. Sure. Right. But what she did is she posted it and it got spread all over the place in the community. And then here this guy was shot by the police because they were even worked up thinking that this guy is suspicious is guy? yeah and i think that's a concern I, I know somebody who is a comedian who just had literally the police took his picture and put it on social media as a suspicious person because he knocked on the wrong door mm -hmm. 
and they got his picture from the camera. All he did is go on the wrong door and knock. So now you're you're living in a world where you are almost afraid to to go visit somebody for the first time <laughs> because or, you could be. I mean, we've had issues where um, one of our good friends that was on the show when we were at the old studio that was in the basement of our house. Yeah. And what did I say? Whenever you came over, I was like, listen, this is the house. Um, go in the fence and come around to the back and go ahead through the back door in the basement. Yeah. So um, he did that, but he had the wrong street. Oh, no. So I'm like, and this is like, this is like, you know, MMA tattooed guy <laughs> that's coming, yeah. knocking on some stranger's back window. And it was just like, oh, no, no, that's not cool. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, but I, I I worry about that with the the social media element. Like like, so you have your cameras, and that's a little bit different because you're not mm-hmm. online sharing them to the rest no, of each no, of you. No, 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 no. I and, mean, if something happens, I'll be like, look at what this thing that happened. Like when I had a confrontation yeah. on the front porch, something legitimate. Or not we somebody... had these these people taking the shredded paper we had aside. Yeah, that that's was so we, weird. Well, so yeah, it was. Well, you said we had we uh, Missy got a shredder and. Uh, 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 a paper shredder and we're like okay well we'll just hold on to it and then in the spring we can use it as mulch yeah so we just had these bags of paper just sitting on our porch and because we really didn't have anywhere else to put it at the time i wasn't saying you're weird i was saying and it was weird that somebody we, would dump yeah that, it. okay but that's weird like, i feel like people are like well why was shredded paper on your porch i was like well yeah, that's the thing too but um yeah and somebody had taken all of those and there's probably like six to eight bags of them and they just like ripped them open in place <laughs> It just was a mess. Uh, so so that was a thing. But again, like I would have had a camera and be like, hey, does anybody know who these kids? Uh, Missy was like, hey, why do you keep saying it's kids? I'm like, because I don't want to believe it's anything but just, you know, kids being kids. You know uh, what I mean? Because it, just, it seems so weird compared to all the things that could have happened with what's on there. You know, it, it, it just that's my thought. But again, you know, like other than that, but it takes a bit for me to do that. I got to go in the app and pull up the clip and then yeah. download that clip, record the clip, you know, I, I, like it's a whole process to do it. Um, well, not to get too dark, but it, and I don't think that it's going in this. The, the objective isn't to go in this direction. I'm not accusing Amazon and Ring of being like super evil. But back in like Nazi Germany, that was the most effective tool that they used to finding people who they thought, you know, were Jews to mm-hmm. put them in concentration camps is they got their neighbors to rat on them. Mm-hmm. And we're living in a world now where, you know, with, with these cameras, especially with the social media element where people are calling out people and trying to like patrol their neighborhood in a way that that's almost like terrifying. Mm-hmm. And again, it's not mm-hmm. the same. They're not throwing people in concentration camps, but no, you know, you are like, like my one friend who was, on Facebook under a police department. It wasn't like it was just Joe Schmo sharing his picture. A police department shared his picture as a suspicious person because he r- knocked on the wrong door. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't even going into the basement like you're talking about. It was someone's front door. He knocked on the wrong right. door right. and left. And right. now he's a suspect from the police. It's just, it's crazy. It's a suspicious and actually cause for suspicion, I guess, is other than, you know, I don't know who this person is at my door. It's like, well, I got people knocking on my door all the time trying to Things sell me happen. energy packages. Yeah. And then I had to yell at one because they wouldn't get off my property. Uh, oh, that's and I, crazy. And I, well, I was trying to leave. And I was like, you need to step off now because I'm not doing this right now. Um, my dad was once referred to as the white Satan by the Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> they kept coming and coming and he threatened to call the police. Uh, get a no soliciting. Get a no soliciting yeah. sign. That's what I did. It says no soliciting. Don't make things weird. Yeah. <laughs> it, was the, it was the best one I could find on Amazon. I actually, Dave Greenwald of the Comic Book Pit podcast uh, suggested that. And he's like, I did that. It was the greatest thing. I don't get anybody. I'm like, That's good. Great. I'm just like, I'm never home. And I just happened to be home and happened to be walking out the walk up to the office when this guy walked up. And it was just like, dude. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm like, I'm do Yeah. Anyways. So um, I have internet and that's cool. Also, it might also mean I'm not here nearly as late as I bring some homework with me and can let my computer sit there and render the podcast and finish that off. So I'm looking forward to that kind of, um, you know, interconnectedness between locations and I can just do the work and, you know, obviously fit the work I have to do here, you know, attach all the drives and the the nice computer and everything. Mm Mm-hmm. Raccoon? Oh no, raccoon would have done. There's no food. Everybody said raccoon. Uh, they think the raccoon is. <laughs> there's is, no uh, food. The way they shredded it. I know this was. This is this is somebody actively doing this. It had to have been. Especially what a weird it. thing to do. What a weird form of vandalism. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, somebody else uh, that very night had um 
were, was home and had a uh, their. Uh, when was this again? This is uh, whenever I went to North Carolina. So it wasn't near like it Halloween, was, like, was three it? Three week, three weeks ago. It was like mid November. Okay. Yeah, I could see that as like a Halloween. Oh, thing yeah. almost. Yeah, it seems know? like it. Yeah. yeah. Somebody no, somebody had their um, grill thrown off their porch. Oh, so that's serious. So, yeah, that's a little more serious. Yeah. The charcoal box and all that stuff. So, anyways, hey, what is your awesome thing, sir? So my awesome thing is a bed, actually. Yay! Because so, because you, um, you don't get enough sleep. I don't get enough sleep. First and of all, with this bed, you might be getting a little too much sleep. Mm-hmm. It is a bed that is set to protect people from earthquakes. And it's, it's a really interesting bed. It's really it's raised up high. It's got like a, a big platform, and you understand why, in a, in a small mattress. Yeah, we'll pull the footage up here in a moment. And in the event of an earthquake, the mattress will <laughs> fold in on itself, and, and then it, it, you'll be in that box that is the frame, and it'll seal shut to protect you from death during an earthquake but what? it's not just <laughs> yeah and it's it's crazy and it's not just a secure it coffin like for a you george jetson situation it does and, it, and it's like a coffin almost but it's not it it's crazy yeah if you look at it again you'll what? see it just folds right in these cg recreations are really interesting too so um i guess there's a couple different versions of these yeah it's just like put up, it just drops you in a box drops you in a box and then it's sealed if you look at it, it's a pretty sturdy box and then below <laughs> if you're looking at the video there's supplies and rations to protect you until you're discovered so there's so there's different versions of this yes i see like like one has like there, like there's walls around you on the bed and basically the ceiling drops on you and then the other one is like again, it just turns. It's like you're in a. It's it's like you're in a. Um, oh, that's interesting. So they have security sensors to detect if you're like over the edge. It won't drop you down. Oh, so you're dead then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you it won't like sever your head and drop that down. Well, a lot of these. I have... mean, it looks like a. It looks like a trap. It does. It looks like something that you would see in some sort of video game or something. Uh, they have different rations in there, water, there's different food items as well. My question is, is there liquor? Because are you gonna be wanna stuck are you gonna wanna be stuck in a box for who knows how many days without? How are you gonna a... go to the bathroom? That's a good point too. Uh-huh. My thing is is is, is here's the question really to think about. Do you wanna survive? Being stuck in a box for days, is that worth surviving an earthquake? Or do you or are you just kinda like Take me now. I'm done. Now these are all, and these are all CG. If you guys are not here, this, these are like CG recreations of what these books beds would be. I, I presume this is kind of a concept. The company says it's uh, ready to sell you one of these beds. Dot dot dot. It's one of those uh, for about three grand. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. they're a Chinese. It's a Chinese invention. I these couldn't. Beds. T- I couldn't tell by the uh, the uh, animations on here. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 from China. I, I actually, I, in some ways, though, I think this could be really beneficial in certain areas. I, I look at like mm-hmm. California, for example. They have so many different earthquakes and things like that. Mm-hmm. Hell, Pennsylvania. If we keep fracking, we might need these too. Mm-hmm. So, not to get political <laughs> <laughs> or environmental. Yeah, environment. Well, you know, environmental science too. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, but yeah, I do. I, I I think this is interesting. I just don't know if I would. It, depending on how quick the response time is, I imagine if I'm in a massive earthquake, they're gonna, it's going to be a while before they get to me. Yeah, right. Yeah. But at least you have a chance, right? You're not. Cr- but do you want not... a chance? Like uh, I don't know. I'm a little claustrophobic. I don't know if I'd yeah, want to be living yeah, in a box yeah, like yeah, that yeah. and eating uh, military rations because I'm sure that's what they have or canned uh, food because. Our, free, our friend Steve from the uh, uh, Bullet Pittsburgh Sports Podcast says, I kind of wanted one for years, but I have a fear of being buried alive. Uh, and basically, that's what would happen, because if a building's falling down around you, you're going to be underneath yeah, all yeah. the rubble. Yeah, it's just like, you're, you're not crushed. It is, it is essentially a, co- a coffin, Yeah, is what it is. So, uh, Dave Ponders of Tiny Shutter Podcast says, it looks like some uh, someone would uh, do in the 80s against bombs, other than, you know, hide under the chair. Oh yeah, that, that 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 actually that would be interesting. I could see actually that's what these people need to do. The the Chinese inventor, if he really wants <laughs> to make a profit, then he needs to modify these for doomsday preppers. Mm-hmm. Radiation fallout. Put it in a bomb shelter. That way, you know, if the shelter gets breached, then you just fall into the bed. 
that is really a key market, especially in the United States, rural America. My goodness, people will be buying these things left and right. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says, uh, uh, Steve also says to you, living is always the key. I'll take smelling and doing what I have to to survive. I'll never toss in the game. <laughs> I'm tossing He's a survivalist. In. I'm not. <laughs> or he's like, it's not worth it. I'm done. I'm done. Nope. Nope. Crush me. Crush me. However, if there was a light in there and... Can I get my Netflix? Is there? <laughs> you know what? That's actually a good point. So if I could get no, no, so the, the, you, you, you raise a good point, Sorg. If I, if I can get the amenities, right? If I could, if I can have my alcohol, if there's a little light in there, I could watch Netflix. Can I also get Disney Plus because I'm really into the Mandalorian show right now? If I can get mm-hmm. that, okay. Mm-hmm. If I can get all of those, sign me up. Can I go into it now? Just escape from everybody, <laughs> just... hide in there, and pretend I'm dying and wait for someone to come find me. I'm a technology vampire. Uh, I call it a tactical bed and it will sell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. Uh, you're going to see one of these in a, as a, uh, as a uh, oh, what was it? I was just playing Call of Duty and it came back to me. Um, when you when you have like the modifiers where you can like do the, 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 the bomb drops and everything and the drones uh, while, you're, while you're shooting things up. Which is this again? Call of Duty. Oh, okay. So I, I, don't, I don't video game. Score streaks, I guess. Like the score streak is one of these beds just drops and you get into it and wait until the thing's over. That's so. cool. This actually could be useful in like an apartment too. And looking at the, the fact that there's different styles, you could actually almost set this up like a, a Murphy bed up against the wall. Steve is with you on the booze part, though. Yes, absolutely. Right. I, I, I well, you guys can find some common ground. Uh, Slice, hey, you know what else? Some common ground. You know what should be in there? <laughs> Do I got Slice and Broadway in my bomb shelter bed? That's the question of the That's night. A good point. Do I have? Do they deliver to do that? They, will they deliver? <laughs> well, listen, Slice. I know that we've given you some really good <laughs> ideas over the years, including, um, including the uh, drone pizza delivery for our friends in Seattle and California um and uh and, and things like that um and also we're sorry for that thing about kicking your door down um it, we were excited uh, but but i'm saying there's this tactical bed thing happening because we just branded that and 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 when the earthquake happens you gotta say where's my earthquake pizza where's the perfect pepperoni pizza for pittsburgh podcasting and doomsday prep uh <laughs> well it's like that commercial for that sub if you remember where where people were trying to stop the fire and they don't call the fire department, they don't call the police, they call the sub company, I'll be there buried under an earthquake and somebody, you know, so I'll have like some sort of walkie or something because like, like this or this whole bed That's is right. like really right. so, souped up in technology and somebody will be like, oh, call the, call the fire department. I said, no, I'm calling Slice. I need someone here now. I need someone I can depend on, awesome. someone who will drive through the rubble, someone who will walk over fallen debris, someone who will put their life on the line to bring me the perfect pepperoni slice, and no one else can do that but Slice on Broadway. Slice on Broadway. Go check them out. Sliceonbroadway.com in Beachview, Carnegie, PA, the east end of Pittsburgh and PNC Park, the now dormant PNC Park. You know, it's not dormant because uh, the Aquaman's shooting a movie over there. Oh, really? uh, last I knew, so <laughs> home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, so go check them out. Sliceonbroadway.com Com. Also, want to give a shout to our friend Chachi. Uh, he's doing a lot of stuff over there on the Thousand and One Games Journey, the Game Journey.com. He's up to Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior, depending on what country you're in. He's hitting some Tecmo Super Bowl. He's on the Nintendo's Tetris. He's doing reviews. He's trying to hit a Thousand and One Games from this book that has plagued him for so many years. Kid Icarus, California Games, and one of Earthquake Beds are a part of that game. Mario 3, all the classics. Relive them along with Chachi and break out your own emulator too. Uh, go check out the gamesjourney.com. Shout out see what's going on with him lately. He's been really, really getting into that. So I am going to we'll, we'll hold on to that bit because I know we did have a little submission, but I did not really. I just got it before the show, so we didn't go deep into it. Hey, Snap Crap. <laughs> Let me tell you about Snap Crap. Oh, I've seen this. You've seen this. Yes. Okay. Oh, this is hilarious. So we had, I believe I believe this was being told to me by uh, one of our compatriots on the uh, Dial It Down podcast that we were um, uh, filming our episode of last week. Um, and, uh, snap crap is an app that invites San Francisco residents to report poop on the city streets. Yeah. So this is actually really important. I don't know if it you've is, seen this, the stories based on, mm-hmm. 
on what's going on in San Francisco. Hey, what's going on? In, enlighten us. What is going on in San Francisco? So actually, it's there. People are there, there's a, a huge homelessness problem mm-hmm. in in San Francisco right now, and people are openly defecating. And a lot of us know about it because a lot of us listen to tech podcasts in California. <laughs> yeah, so they talk about. <laughs> I know a lot about what happens in California. Yes. So yeah, so they're they're defecating. There's also a lot of needles that that can be found. Uh, people are. Like in preschools, people are teaching their kids to watch out for dirty needles because are, they're are the, just everywhere. Are, are the needles in the poop? I don't know that they're together. Is this? Is this is but there was one report from a local newscaster in San Francisco where the guy literally dropped his pants and took a dump in the middle of the street right mm-hmm. in front of the cameraman. Like it, there's just mm-hmm. no shame in mm-hmm. some of the areas, and it's not. Apparently, it's not every street, but there's like a certain part of the city that where it's really bad. Mm-hmm. And it's so bad that they had an expert on. I wish, I wish I had the article in front of me. Uh, they had an expert on who has studied impoverished areas, and really, they said certain parts of San Francisco are worse than the worst third world like cities. Wow, it's bad. And this is where you know people are being priced out there. Yeah, the I mean, it is really like the the technological center of the of the United States. And and this is the thing that's happening, but the app is Snapcrap. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. It's over here. Uh, yeah, it's Snapcrap. Take a picture of poop. I think this is like the PGH three one one app, but um, I'm playing some other video down here. Uh, so, <laughs> but it is like, hey, there's a problem here. Somebody clean up this poop. <laughs> so, and I, I'm sure the city. You know, this is such a big problem. The city has. Um, task for that man i'm looking at that logo someone's going to get sued for that yeah <laughs> it's, like, it's entirely it is entirely the snapchat uh, theme to it it's a great idea though i mean they really do need to do something to start addressing this one of the problems is i i know that there there's a lot of struggles as far as how to, to fix the problem i know there's been a lot of controversy about the way that the city government is is planning to address it what worries me though is what happened in seattle where they, they have a similar problem, uh, not so much, I haven't heard, heard of any issues with open defecation, but they've had issues with with homelessness because of, of primarily Amazon that's moved in and, and mm-hmm. priced a lot of people out. And the city passed a tax to make big companies like Amazon pay a tax to help stop the homelessness crisis and find housing for people and things like that. And Amazon beat the tax, they were more powerful than the government. I guess they've since decided that they're going to help and do something because the public shaming was so bad, but it, it's crazy. Something needs to be done, and really, San Francisco, it, it's a shame. I, I really have always wanted to visit San Francisco, and then after hearing these reports, I thought, well, maybe I'll wait a few years to see if they can clean it up first. I've been out there about, it was literally my first plane trip was to San Francisco, visiting uh, some in-laws moved out there, and um, and uh, it's it's sorry i'm trying to type bunker bombshell pizza to slice on broadway right now <laughs> uh, because that came up from amanda in the chat uh but uh, yeah and the homeless pro- uh, problem was uh, uh visible very visible and uncomfortable portland yeah. portland was too um and it, i understand it's only gotten worse since and let's just so. also say that this city isn't that much better if you remember uh we might be better as far as as a problem it might not be as big of a problem but it still is a problem here and if you remember, it was back, this was a, a few mayors ago, uh, back when Bob O'Connor was here. If you remember, when we brought the All-Star game to Pittsburgh, instead of solving the homeless problem, their solution was to literally huddle them up into internment camps, so that way they wouldn't show up on national television. Mm-hmm. That's how we mm-hmm. handle our homeless here in Pittsburgh, so we're yeah. really no better. Yeah, no, no, absolutely not. It's so. it's really, it's sad, you know, it's, you get people, a lot of these homeless people are veterans because... They have come and and they're dealing with issues like post-traumatic stress disorder and things like that. And that's why they've Mm -hmm. often made a decision to live on the streets. And instead of getting these people help, at least our solution in Pittsburgh was to huddle them into camps and keep them off camera. Mm -hmm. And that's really, Mm -hmm. you know, disrespectful to the people. A lot of, like I said, a lot of these people were veterans and it's disrespectful for the service that they've done. Absolutely. There's still something we need to solve around here. Yeah. Um, Turning it back around on this. Uh, Everything, man. I I don't have a good transition to anything we have on the lineup <laughs> here because everything just sounds like an, me being an asshole in comparison. I'm excited about the Black Friday. Black Friday. Nearly forty percent of online Black Friday purchases were made with phones. You know, the only buy uh, a couple things on my Black Friday, and you know what I used to buy them? Your phone. An, an Xbox 360. Ooh. Really? 
So that's an unusual option. I will poke at the the Black Friday deals on the Xbox Store. Uh, last last year, that's where I picked up like all the fighting games I've been meaning to play. Okay, because it was the first year. I, I think it was the first year I had an Xbox One, and I got like uh, what Mortal Kombat ten. In uh, uh, um, Injustice Two, uh, Marvel versus Capcom Three, and I paid maybe twenty five bucks for the collect for all of them. This year, I only p- spent twelve dollars, and I picked up Final Fight, the old beat 'em up because I mm-hmm. really like that game, and I don't I have a really good Sega CD version that I can't play anywhere. Um, what I get NBA Jam on Fire Edition. I've been playing it on my phone, and um, there was one more Strider. There was a remake of Strider they did. Uh, a few years ago, apparently, it's like a side scroller, but 3D, this kind of thing. Huh. So it's just, you know, just little like quick play games that, like, you know, I, I love arcade games and stuff I can just jump into and not think about every once in a while. So, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did buy on, on my phone for Black Friday. I bought a gift for my sister on Amazon. I bought puppy pads. <laughs> there you go. On my phone. Yeah. And, and I'll be honest, I think shopping online on the phone is easier mm-hmm. than shopping online on the computer. I do. I, and you know me, I'm more of a computer person than a phone person when it comes to, to a lot of things. But when it comes to online shopping, you can just scroll and it's much easier just to see things than to try to like move the mouse and tap the button or use that. So it's just like it's just very intuitive to do it right from the phone. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's one of the reasons. It depends on what it is. Like with the Amazon, it's like, oh, I'm just going to pull up the barcode and there you go. Well, that's true um, too. Or even if I have to go to a Walmart, like I don't go into a Walmart looking for something because I, you know, with the traveling, it's like, okay, we need to run into this Walmart and get a thing we need for the shoot, right? Like tape or something, yeah. right? Uh, who knows? Or something for the DVD tape or something, something small. And it's like, okay, I don't know where they put the hardware aisle in this Walmart. You pull up the Walmart app and uh, Target does this too. And it's just like tape pulls up everything. You see the thing. You see it, they, they have all the aisles labeled now. And it's it's see, Target was like that years and years ago. Yeah, they did even. it first. Yeah, but Walmart perfected it. Oh, for did that sure for sure? It's a lot more user friendly. Well, I mean, as far as maybe as far as uh, as a consumer mm-hmm. goes, but as far mm-hmm. as an employee, I know when I worked at Target, they would tell you the aisle, but then it would tell you how many shelves down, how many shelves right, up, right, and then right. how many spaces over on the shelf. Yeah, so they really just was. kind of opened that up to the users in the app yeah I'm like hey this is how we restock well instead of having everybody wander around why don't we just say hey k22 but all you get is the aisle on targets you mean? on on i think on both of them okay. so it's like hey i'm in k22 but i'm looking for this tape where is it 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 you know <laughs> and you're spending like most of the time so still looking down yeah an entire side of an aisle looking for that small thing you're looking for yeah, see, right. that's a shame because they could make it more specific. At least I know with Target because I know when I worked there, and this was back, like, so what, I've been at my current job for five years, six, seven, eight, it was almost ten years ago when I worked at Target. And even then, I could scan any item in the store and it would tell me the aisle, how many shelves down, how many shelves up, how many spaces over. It was just, and then I could even then click a button to look and see the exact location at other stores in the region mm-hmm. as well. Which was really nice. It's always interesting because these uh, reports are also coming from Adobe Shopping Data. Huh. Adobe does a lot of data mining. Yeah, apparently. that's interesting. So there's like reports like this come from Adobe every once in a while. I wonder now. where they do that because I'm, I'm thinking like as far as using Adobe products, they don't really see what no, you're they're, using. No, they're just like there is somewhere where they're just mining data. Okay. Like this, um, yeah. and and polls and things like that. Thirty nine percent officially of online Black Friday purchases were made with smartphones. That's a jump from last year's 33%. I'm surprised it's not higher, to be honest, because a lot of people do not own computers anymore. Mm-hmm. They just own phones and tablets because they really don't need one. Uh, my friend... Well, we, we're saying smartphones. We're not oh, saying, saying grandma well. with a tablet. Okay. I mean, there's... I think if you start rolling that in, you're going to... You look at the, the... I mean, where do we put the line of computer, right? Well, technically, so, they're all computers, but right. it's not the... the the standard sit at home with the Versus mouse and smartphone keyboard smartphone or something like that. I just so. yeah, I feel like people with an actual like cause they even even my grandparents they did they got mm-hmm. rid of the computer and went to the tablet because then they could sit in the living room with one another and mm-hmm. and use the tablet. We were so close. I was I I just kind of had this not that I usually do on Thanksgiving, but I had this like stand of like I will not be going into a Walmart or anything on Thanksgiving because I think good. You know, it, I don't think they should. Well, be the open. problem is um, then we needed to get a pie for dinner. And we yeah. ran into the Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I did not. 
but my, my, my wife did. So, um, also we had our Thanksgiving dinner with my immediate immediate family Tuesday <laughs> Tuesday afternoon mm-hmm. because um, they work with Walmart. So it's like, well, there goes your Thanksgiving, and that's always been it's always been an issue. Um, but uh, it, it's so, so yeah. She went in and was it was amazing because I'm like, how was it in there? Because it was. It was probably like four ish, maybe. So it wasn't like doorbuster time. Yeah. But like there was like a cop car outside. She's like, yeah, there's like three cops in there with guns. I guess they always wow. do. Wow. Yeah. Um, but there's also a table and they were trying to get me to take free coffee. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's nice. Should have taken so, the coffee. <laughs> I was like, you should have brought me some coffee. Uh, but um, and it was also, this is like moon, right? <laughs> you know, it's like going to be the, I don't know. Is it the more dangerous because it's all the soccer moms or is it, <laughs> I, I, you know. That's a good question because it's the worse? Black Friday time. It's yeah, not like yeah, a stereotypical. Yeah. It, it's like, where, where, do, where do the worst stories come from? And it's probably the suburbs um, than the, the, the worst neighborhoods. Um, but anyways, I tried to buy something on site for Cyber Monday mm-hmm. and it was, uh, on this one website and they had this big banner at the top of the website, 25% off store wide. But then everything I looked at buying was excluded. Mm-hmm. I gave up. I was, I ended up not buying anything. Right. Cause it, there, there, there's, you know, everything was excluded. I'm seeing reports like don't buy the black Friday Nintendo switch. It's the old version with like two hours less of battery. Well, that's good. That's what I need if it's cheap. Yeah, because yeah. I'm not gonna play it enough to need the long battery. Wait, it, it's, it wasn't really a deal. It was still yeah. like three hundred dollars worth of game. Okay, which is just like I think we've done this. Before. However, I saw a laptop while I was scrolling from Dell that had a twenty-four hour battery life. <laughs> what <laughs> was that's it what like it a said. Chromebook or something? No, but also, you gotta nice. watch, man. And I remember this back in the day because I remember uh, there was. There was something I think I think my dad got a settlement or something and and like everybody got a TV we Black Friday you know everybody got a new computer and but they were all like the HPs like the HP pavilions that they had there and you could tell like like whenever you looked it up for service you can tell like and and, and somebody was just talking about like the laptops were like this too they're like the bare minimum Black Friday version when you get the deal. Yeah. Right. They're just like, oh, everything's turned down. There's not as much RAM. You know, you can tell like this was. This one was pretty souped up, though. Yeah. It was, it yeah. was not a cheap computer. It was like a, um, over $2,000. Well, I'm for saying like, like Walmarts. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, like this they, was direct from Dell. They on the have website. special packages that they push. Um, and it's it's very interesting to see those kinds of things. I always loved it when I worked at Kmart and they would run a deal on Matchbox cars where it was uh ten for ten dollars, yet they sold them regular price ninety nine cents. Mm-hmm. So they rose that rose the price a penny and called it a deal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's like Apple's deals. Uh, <laughs> not not really uh, that yeah. great. Dave Ponder said that my my deal sounds like Macy's. He's right. They're, they they were all like that. The only one I think that doesn't do that is Kohl's. Mm-hmm. Or they just like whatever it is, it is. We returned something to what was it to Amazon? Yeah, I think it was an Amazon return. Yeah, do it and through Kohl's. Yeah, every yeah. time you get a twenty five percent off coupon for Which anything we didn't in use the store. We were like, I don't need anything. I, I don't even know what to do with this right Buy now. Buy a pair of pants. Buy a pair of pants. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I did. I just what? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I always use an extra pair of jeans. Yeah, it was just like a random thing. I was just like, well, you can return the Kohl's, and I will only return through Kohl's now because of that. Oh yeah, yeah, it, because why not? You get free money. Mm-hmm. And it's strange because you walk in because we are the ones in South Hills. And you walk in, and and we're like, well, where do I do this? And you'll see signs for Amazon returns. And then there's just like this desk on the corner of an aisle. And there's a lady there will come along eventually. <laughs> and it's just like, wait, is this lady just doing Amazon returns? Do they get that many Amazon returns? They do, because you know what? They're the most convenient. Because have you tried returning something at the UPS store? Oh, my mm-hmm. God. You go in there, and it's a pain. You have to wait. And then once you get to the the thing they want to charge you money to put it in a box mm-hmm. whereas Coles will just send it out for you um they saying, wanted to charge me money to return my item ponder saying uh Coles was crazy on black friday carmen saying that he got a 220 dollar tent for 75 dollars oh wow there you go there's there's your black friday wins right there yeah i'm talking about apple a moment ago. i only buy three gifts oh, three gifts that's it i i've been Anti gift lately. I'm just like I I've been just not Christmasing a lot. Well, I never do it until the last minute. Yeah, yeah it's just I'm I waiting until my paycheck because I, I got a big pay coming. So Oof, yeah, it's, all of it's going it's to get tough. December is December is very tough for me. Yeah, um, on a few different levels. So. Why do we really need to give gifts though? Like I wouldn't be I would be happy if we all just like met for dinner 
You know yeah. what I mean? Like a thanks, like another like Thanksgiving, a friend's gi- like a friend's giving. Yeah, like I, I don't, I, I don't. Well, first off, I don't buy friends gifts, and I tell I them keep... that right off the bat. I said, you, you know, if they, you want to get me a gift, that's on you. Expect nothing in return. I'm the, I'm the worst. I always want to have a holiday party here at the studio. Then I think about like now, and it's like oh, it's too late to plan a holiday party. Why everybody, not? Has, everybody has plans. So what? Who whoever shows up shows up. That's true. That's true. Make it a potluck type of a deal. A no gifts up. allowed. I haven't even put my tree up. I, I think I'm going to throw my tree all the way. It, a little bit of a whatever over there. A little bit of fuzz. Whatever that's called. That what? red thing. What? Yeah. What, what are you talking about? Red thing. The red thing. What the fuzz. Thing? There's what a fuzz. What are you pointing at? Are you pointing at the thing on Shawn Michaels? Yeah. The, with the hearts? Yes. That must be it. <laughs> He's got the fuzz around his neck. That's that's Christmassy looking. <laughs> I'll just, come wearing my sweater. He's just a sexy boy. <laughs> Um, I had another story here. Um, somebody um, apparently has taken the Swift development tools and have developed so you can have an old school iPod, you know, with the click wheel and everything. Yes. On your iPhone. Oh, that got weird. Um, People don't realize how cool that was. The old the oh, the, the wheel. Played. Why is it playing? We will play now. There you go. That is, uh, looks like an iPhone, you know, one of the new iPhone 10, 11 models uh, of some sort. And it does have the, it, you know, you're kind of sliding at the top of the uh, album covers, uh, but it's got the click wheel. If I had the sound on, you hear the clicks um, on this when they uh, go to adjust. That's really thing. cool. So, yeah, the fun little, fun little interface, nice little throwback. There was somebody, we were live streaming something up on uh, Allentown um, for, uh, oh, it was like, something on the hilltop it was like a skeeter kind of thing and with re360 and the, the 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 main attraction for the night he actually was all of his music for his songs that he sang to were on a classic ipod oh that's cool so you say all right i'm gonna play this track next because it's a really kind of loose affair and um and you just like and you see him going for, and and queuing up his next track and you'd hear the click wheel <laughs> you that's know, awesome. over over the PA, <laughs> you know, that I was yeah. singing through. I was just like, all right, that's nice and old school. So oh uh, boy. Um, so anyways. You know what though? That was such a nice feature. Like it was it was really easy to to navigate music. And honestly, I think it's easier to to scroll through mm-hmm. than it is to do this up we, and down motion. We had one. Um I got I got Missy a like a hundred and thirty gig one. Mm-hmm. We still have. Yeah, uh, they are long lasting. Yeah, they they lasted long. We were able to put a lot of stuff on there, um, but you know that persistence. You know when when we came around to iPhones, kind of changed the game. So also she might be. I think she's spoiled by CarPlay. By uh, CarPlay, we ran, yeah. We ran into car when we went to North Carolina. I'm just like I was gonna yep. get CarPlay. I was gonna buy it and have it installed in my car. But then now that I'm moving downtown and I'm gonna be walking all the time, it just won't be worth it. But I mean, it is so cool looking. Uh, Carmen says that it sounds like I'm a festivist celebrant. Yes. <laughs> yes. Get ready for the airing of grievances. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> we should just have a festivist party. Jeez. We, is, does anyone have a poll? Anyone in the chat room? Do you have a poll? We need a festivist poll. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I plan that uh, Sorgatron Media holiday. I mean, it's probably not going to be much. I'll, 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 why, not, you know. why not do it after Christmas? Why does it have to be now? That's a lot true. of companies do have their holiday parties after the new year because mm. they know everybody's too busy and then they just wait for like a week or two after New Year's whenever everything's dead and nothing's going on and people are looking for things to do. Then you have a little party. And, that's true. That's and then true. it actually brightens people's spirits because they say that that's one of the most depressing times of the year. Mm. It's right after the holidays mm. because everything's gone. All of the lights are gone, but it's still very dark out and mm. there's nothing to do. And It's like two months of barren wasteland. Yeah. So yeah. people actually need something to brighten their mood. So that might be that might be your time, Sorg. That might be your time to shine. <laughs> there you go. Uh, anything else you want to you wanna touch on here while we got you in studio? I don't know. I'm just... I, I say we're really short on on. Um, uh, we have these uh, board game. Yeah, I didn't get to open that up. What is what yeah, is going so, on? With so that? I, I think it's going again. Not I'm not a super board game person lately, um, but I, I have some friends who are, and I, I had uh, thrown one in here about these board games that have like apps okay. that go along with it, so you play part of the game. Uh, you know, with your phone, but they are physical board games on top of it. We're talking like it's got listed here. Uh, uh, Fuse, Man- Mansions of Madness, Clank in Space. Uh, they have a Star Wars Imperial Assault one. Uh, you're something called Stop Thief. 
and which also kind of remind me there's a werewolf one um that you can do because we, we've played a couple of these games and and this seems to be to me a lot of these you know, i'll play one of these videos to get a look at um i've always felt like there's too much to keep track of and maybe that's where like an app will help with that yeah so hey you landed on this square this is what this square means kind of thing that's interesting so yeah, I mean, that would be really helpful for someone like me because I refuse to read instructions mm-hmm. when it comes mm-hmm. to a game. I just want to play it. I don't want to sit there and read a manual before I play a game. Yeah, it's, it, like, it gets overcomplicated. I mean, but once you get past that, some of these are really fun. Yeah. Like Munchkin or, um, you know, Catan I hear people talking about. I don't think I've ever played it, though. Um, you know, things like that. Exploding Kittens. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, and, and this one. Oh, oh, I like this one because this one, uh, the... Uh, Star Wars Imperial Assault one, like the map is actually the map map that you lay out here is actually imitated on the, yeah, I, the I iPad saw that. too. So it will kind of go along with that. But it's still like a card game and everything uh beyond that. So speaking of games, have you played any of the Alexa games? Hmm. They actually have games now built into I, I've heard of that. The A train, yeah. And I've thought about investing in that, but I just don't ever I don't mm-hmm. know if I'll ever do it. Yeah, I just kind of having the time. It's kind of like whenever I I think about it, you know, it's just like not a time to, you know, I I don't have enough downtime to be like, hey, A train, let's play a game and see what happens. Here's something interesting that, that we a, can we that could be a live feed. Yeah, here's an interesting story. It's not new, but I mean, it might be new, new to you. Uh, you can so you remember how, like Siri when Siri first came out, she was a lot more interesting. She was sassy, and she would have comebacks and things like that, and now she's become extremely dull. Yeah. Well, Alexa obviously has, has picked up the slack there in that regard, and she's, she's got a lot of great comments. And one of the things that you can now do is you can actually set your Alexa up to insult, and to insult you and to say mean things. So if I say, A-Train, tell me something mean... Like, like she'll start ripping on NBA teams. Hmm. It's hilarious. And like, like one of the things she would say is, uh, uh, you know where the magic is? Obviously not in Orlando. Like she has like these like mean burns that she just comes up with that are just really, really brutal. Uh, one of the things was, uh, she said, uh, I think it was the Celtics. She said, what did, uh, what did Santa get the, the naughty kid this year? Season tickets to the Cel- the Boston Celtics games. Like, wow. She's so, uh, Amazon echo insult comic. Yeah, like she's nasty mean with like hmm. some of these like teams and stuff. Uh, and then she also has an insult feature where you can say, A-Train, insult me. And it, it's this guy in a British accent who just rips on you and just says like the meanest things about you. It, it's pretty huh. great. Uh, so yeah, there's some some fun things. She's become very sassy and uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. I'm always asking her to insult me. It's It's fun. Uh, from the chat room, uh, we were talking about the board games a moment ago, uh, and uh, there's a there's a place over at Castle Shannon that's doing board games uh, called Drawbridge Games. If you're in the area, go check them out. Uh, and there's a lot of Festivus stuff. They're asking if I'll boop the internet at the Festivus party. You know about that, right? Wait, what's this again? I, uh, well, what, we had some wrestlers get me drunk on the live feed a couple of uh, oh, Christmas wow. <laughs> ago, and I fell out of the chair, threw up over here, and, oh, and apparently God. booped the internet. Um, I I. It's the only time in my life I got blackout drunk and it happened on the internet live. That is hilarious. So there was that. Oh, um, God. So the only time that ever be... happened to me, I got promoted at work. <laughs> <laughs> or at least I got a raise, rather. I don't know what it did to our hits. <laughs> yeah. so, and we didn't have Google Ads uh, turned on or anything. So, yeah. Um, I lost my transition. Oh, hey. Uh, I did want to call attention to, again, something that just popped up. That I did not read yet, but uh, if you go over to the Facebook group for um, Awesome Cast, uh, our friend Christopher Whitlatch had posted 10 tabletop games uh, more immersive than Dungeons & Dragons. So uh, go check that out. It's it's a GameRant.com article uh, that he has over on the group. So if you're down down with the board games, might be one for you to read. That and the uh, app-based board games, too. So Yeah. Uh, any recommendations? Uh, Brian is looking for a Nintendo DS. Yeah, yeah. If anybody knows, like a really, really cheap one. I'm mm-hmm. talking like fifty bucks or less. I don't think it's. I don't think there's gonna be one for fifty bucks unless you get like a DS, not like a two DS, three DS, because that's like a different. Like the two DS, three DS. There's too many DSs. Why? Well, why, why is it well they stopped one? and made a switch. So they're actually not making. They did. A, they did make a switch. <laughs> yeah, they made. They literally made a switch. So, um, so no, you can probably get an older DS for a lot cheaper. 
at, at this point. But I mean, it's, you're not going to get like the newer of the games, but you're going to get some pretty okay games. Yeah. There's some good Zeldas and everything on there. So probably a Mario Kart. So, um, wow. Well, with that, it is time. We should probably get ready for the wrestling podcast. <laughs> uh, Brian Crawford, pghmuseums.org. I love I have something to plug for you now. Yeah. Makes it nice. It felt weird. It felt weird not having that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can buy a Festivus pool on, uh, was that on Amazon? Yep. Thank you for Excellent. that, Carmen. So, uh, where can people, of course, pghmuseums.org. We talked a little bit about what's upcoming. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at this Festivus pool. It, it looks, it's only 10 bucks. Mm. Only 10 bucks. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. We have some stuff coming up. Uh, we're going to be doing quarterly events starting uh, in 2020. So, our members will get discounts for that. And right now, Right now, 25 days, right? There's 25 days in December, and for all 25 days, you can buy a PGH Museum's membership for 25% off. Mm. So it's only $15 for uh, a year's worth of discounts and members-only content and just supporting the most comprehensive directory of museums, galleries, and historic places in Mm. southwestern Pennsylvania. Um, I guess I should mention also, if you uh, maybe cross over with some of our other shows, we do have the Indie Wrestling Network that we do. That's usually five ninety nine a month. We actually have a Cyber Monday deal uh, with the code Cyber Monday twenty nineteen. I believe that's expiring at midnight tonight, this Tuesday. Uh, that you can get that for three months for two ninety nine a month, half price. Wow! As our special Cyber Monday we're rolling out, yeah, we put a little bit of an extension on that. You know, so. You know, we could throw that out around Raw and stuff last night. So, um, and if you're catching this Wednesday morning, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it, it, from there, hey, check out SorgatronMedia.com. A lot of great stuff. Comic Book Pit was here last night. Um, they were having some fun talking about Star Wars, which I will be, I think, will be their next episode. I know the first of, of the recordings drop today, so please go check them out. Um, and of course, everybody else in the Sorgatron Media family. I know there was a new Thrifty, a new Bardic Mystery tour and uh speaking of dungeon dragons and of course pittsburgh current should be back this week with the recording on thursday morning so stay tuned for all of that thank you brian crawford for joining us thank you and thank you all of you for being out there in the chat room and on the podcast please again share the show if you're digging what's going on uh, or become part of the patreon and uh and uh you know leave a review all that kind of fun stuff for that uh, helps the podcast world uh, we haven't really done a drive for that for a while. So really appreciate that if you do that. And uh, until then, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.